Hello, YouTube. Literally, like a day after I mounted my new Garmin Zumo XT, wired it to the accessory um, wires right behind here. I saw a video on this a uh, cyber charger phone holder for motorcycles from Ciro 3D. So I ordered it and my plan is to it comes with a wiring harness to mount it here. It's a uh, has kind of a lever lock so you screw it to fit your phone and then it has a lever that just squeezes down on it and then it wirelessly charges your phone so i won't have to have a cord plugged in so with that i think i'm going to get rid of this charger this motorcycle charger here the you know like a cigarette lighter and then a couple usbs only one of them works now uh I have it wired right to a, the tender lead off my battery. So I'm gonna get rid of that, mount this, and I'm gonna put it into that accessory mount. Well, then I started thinking, what's that fused at? Where's it at? And you can't really find it anywhere, but I thought, well, I wonder if it's fused with the back uh, charging port in the rear trunk, so I, Pulled the fuse from slot six to put it to slot seven to make it continuously on for that back one. And sure enough, my Zumo turned on. So it is fused right along with, with this. So then I thought, well, I wonder, it's a five amp fuse. I wonder if it's, cause sometimes I charge, you know, like my spare little battery banks, GoPro batteries, back here while we're riding and my wife I added that port USB port here which is right there <clears throat> so my wife can charge her phone while we're riding so I thought well I'm just gonna plug in everything and see what happens so I have a phone plugged in my Hero 4 with the uh, Cena backpack on it charging the GPS is on. I've got a three bank GoPro battery. Two of them are still charging and a battery bank charging. So that's as much as I would have any normal time anyway. So obviously the five amp circuit is gonna be okay. I was a little worried when I realized that's all on the same circuit. So I am going to uh, get all this put away, get set up, and be right back with you. So BRP did not leave very much wire here for this accessory uh, plug. You know, when I had them pulled out, when I did the GPS install, those spade connections were just barely outside here. <clears throat> you know, couldn't even pull them tight. So I'm gonna add that cyber charger to this and I'm gonna go in that same spot. So I think what I'm gonna do is about 15 minutes later, the frunk's off. I had it off a year and a half ago and cleaned the radiators out and it's time to do that again anyway, it looks like. But anyway, here is the accessory plug. It's zip tied, so it can be longer. Um, so I'm gonna get my ducks in a row here and show you how I'm gonna run the GPS and my cell phone charger off these wires and make it better than these silly spade connections. So I'll be right back. Here's the wires that are going up to my GPS. 
this is the accessory wire that just barely made it, you know, through that plug on the back of the trunk there. Um, so what I'm going to do, I got these pigtails from valueaccessories.com and they're actually made to like put a circuit in series with something else. Like if you were going to add some aftermarket turn signal lights, you could plug into the turn signal, have this, you know, the plug turn signal plug in here and then actually have a, a good set of wires with a good connection going to accessories. <clears throat> I've had these for a while and I'm going to use these to replace these spade connectors and put these good waterproof plugs on this and my new phone charger that I'm going to run. I've got heat shrink from Harbor Freight, which is actually a really good quality stuff. It's uh, you know, it has a glue on the inside when it gets hot. So I'll be back when I have it all fixed up and show you. I know this probably isn't the exact proper way to do this because the bike side of most connections are this one, but these pigtails come like this. So you can go in series. So I've got both of those. Uh, the colored wire in this harness was positive. I did double check that. And of course we'll go with the colored wire in this harness is positive. So this is the way it's going to be. And I'm going to make it so these connections are here above the battery and I'll make it all zip tied and neat so I can get to this stuff without having to pull the front off on this one. Where here they are. So what I'm going to do, so I have enough to make a good connection. I'm going to snip this one off and then for these, um, little pigtails that's left there. We're just going to run this over. And this will make a watertight connection to protect the end of that, that wire there. And the same with this one. So when I button this all up, I'll just heat those up, shrink them up. And then like my GPS harness is going to get this one. And my new phone harness is going to get this one and they'll both plug into this harness. So there we go. I'll be back. Okay. I've got it all <coughs> wired up. Here's the original accessory plug that, you know, was meant to come out that hole in the front. I've got everything. Here's the two connectors, got them plugged in. This is my battery tender. I got the wires ran like with this wire up behind a big wiring harness here, zip tied, which reminds me I need to cut it. So zip tied there, zip tied right here and then coming up basically between the headlights and this space between the headlights is a good place to take up your extra slack. So to test it, I'm going to move the fuse from switched power for accessories to constant. GPS turned on and my phone's charging. This is what I like most about this phone case. Besides it being wirelessly charging, I can just slip it out, slip it back in and crank it down and have the wireless work. No more uh, 12 volt charger here. <clears throat> I'm 
I've got it, you know, everything kind of out of the way here. Anyway, I will link to Ciro's website. I will link to value accessories, those pigtails, if you want to do something like this also. Now it's time to put this thing back together. If you want to know how the front comes off, it's way easier once you know how to do it because it went really fast. I bet I had all these body panels off, the front trunk off, and the headlights out in like 25 minutes maybe. I do have a video on removing the front and the body panels. If you need to know how to do it, you can watch that. Okay, just a quick note. This silver thing is a zero mount. It's got a small, probably a 16 millimeter ball, 15 and a half or so. This mount you need to order if you're gonna do a ram mount of any kind. This one is a quarter by 20 female. It comes with a couple different size stainless steel studs and some you know a nut and a trim piece this is a one of the ram balls off of this dash mount that came stock on it <clears throat> and they're kind of hard plastic so they're not kind of the grippy rubber like ram ones are i ordered actual ram balls to hold this stuff all more solid and then when I decided to get this, I ordered another one of these good ram balls that are just a quarter inch female thread. But it's tied up somewhere with postal service. So I used one of these hard balls. When it comes in, I'll change to the ram. So I will link this, this mount, and also one of these ram. I'll like put a part number for the the good the good ram ones that are like rubberized because they hold a lot better this one I, i'm afraid is gonna drift a little but i got it pretty tight anyway i'll link all that stuff in the description thank you for watching bye